Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, this is my second attempt to uh, record an introduction. Uh, it always, there's always something goes wrong technically when you're doing these things. You've got to think about all the bits and pieces. But this morning we come together uh, and worship and we've been, share, we've been sharing together in church last Sunday morning with a lovely time. And we know that there are many who can't join us for a variety of reasons. But as you share with us, uh, over the uh, internet that, that it will indeed be just a time of blessing uh, around God's word. This morning, we give thanks for all those who are out of hospital. We continue to remember those who are not so well and continue to pray for those who are waiting for tests and results. As we come together, let's seek God's face. Loving Father, this morning we come together uh, mindful that we are weak and frail individuals who are utterly dependent upon you and your faithful love to us. We thank you this morning that while we were yet strangers to your grace and your love, you loved us and you knew us. And we thank you that that love found its expression in the person of your only son, the Lord Jesus, who left heaven's glory to come to this world to be our savior and our friend. And we thank you that by his life and death and resurrection, we have the joy of becoming adopted sons of God, joint heirs with the Savior, inheritors of an eternal kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for that promise that you are with us always and that you have purpose and plan for each of our lives. May we lay our lives open for you in these days. As we come as a fellowship, we confess our sin, Lord, individually, seeking again your forgiveness and your strength that we might live for you in these days. Lord, we are living and we continue to live in strange days. And Lord, we're very conscious as we listen to our news reports of this, the rise in the incidence of COVID-19 and the possibilities of further lockdowns. Lord, we just pray that you will continue to preserve us as a people. We ask that you'll continue to give wisdom to those who are in leadership, both in government and in health services, to guide and direct us as a people. But also, Lord, give us wisdom how we might live and conduct our lives. We, this morning, continue to be anxious and concerned for those who are the most vulnerable within our society. And we ask that you'll watch over them and care for them. But we also remember our boys and girls who have returned to school in a very changed and, and very different situation. We ask, Lord, that that will not hinder or impede uh, their, their progress in school. And, and we ask that they will have resilience as they move forward in these days. And we thank you for them. We also this morning remembered our young people who are returning to university and some who are starting university. We think of young people like Matthew now in Edinburgh. We remember David as he returns to Preston. We remember uh, Beth as she goes to Wales. We remember Chloe as she goes back uh, to Southampton. We remember Thomas back at Queen's. We remember Zara returning to her studies in Queen's. And, and, and so many others, Lord, across our fellowship, grand, grandsons and granddaughters, that we would be anxious for. Lord, watch over them and care for them. But also, Lord, we pray that you will lead them spiritually, that they may indeed walk in the way of the Lord, that they will remember what they were taught here in junior church and, and in Bible class, and that each of them early in life will commit their way into the hands of Almighty God. Lord, today, we, we just thank you for this time of meeting together. We continue, Lord, just to remember so many uh, in need uh, across our congregation and across our city. May they just find strength and help in you. May they learn the experience of the psalmist when he said, in those moments of trouble, I lift my eyes onto the hills, knowing my help comes from the Lord, but also recognizing that the Lord is my light and my salvation, and there is nothing that I should fear. Lord, guide us and bless us as we continue in worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read uh, from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 9. Uh, bear with me, there's one or two names, not too many in this passage. And David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Zimba. They called him to appear before David and the king said to him, are you Zimba? Your servant, he replied. 
The king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Zimba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Zimba answered, he is at the house of Machir, son of Amil in Lodabar. So David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Machir, son of Amil. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the lands that belong to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dog like me? Then the king summoned Zimba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Zimba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Zimba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Zimba's household were servants to Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table, and he was crippled in both feet. And we thank God for his word this morning, and we pray that it will be a blessing to our hearts as we look at it a little bit later on in the service. Boys and girls, we're continuing our little series of Douglas the, the, the Puppet, and we trust that you'll enjoy the latest episode but also just keep safe in this week and continue to enjoy school. And uh, we hope God willing towards the beginning of October to recommence Junior Church. And we would love to see you back if that's at all possible at that date. But enjoy the rest of your week and may you know each of you God's richest blessing.